Chapter 25 Dante Exhaustion weighed me down as we left the airstrip. Our limo had been waiting to take me to Isabella's hotel at the Viceroy L'Amitage in Beverly Hills. I hadn't slept at all the whole trip. Thoughts of that piece of shit forcing Isabella down, kissing her, and ripping off her clothes had me on the breaking point. Gaspard was able to shake the thoughts of murder out of my mind and console the better part of my nature. I was glad for him because I had every intention of strangling Nathan to death when we got there. This could not go on for much longer. She had to come to her senses and leave that idiot. What more proof did she need? While her cousin Maya and I may have had our differences, we could agree on one thing. Isabella must seek refuge from him. I was sure she'd told Maya the same thing she'd said to me, and if she had, no doubt they'd been talking all night. I hoped Maya would be able to persuade her to leave her destructive marriage. Otherwise, what else could be done to convince her? I might have to go back on my promise and confess everything I was withholding to her. My undying love, my heart and soul, the letters, everything. I had been wondering, though. What would she think of me if I were to tell her now? Would she shun me? Would she be shocked or feel betrayed? The truth would be shown to her eventually, but it must be subtle. Actually, no. Thinking of it now, I knew I couldn't tell her yet. Not in the dismayed emotional state she was in right now. I couldn't make any judgment calls based on how I was feeling. I had to wait. Compounding her turmoil with my affection was the last thing she needed. Sure, we're here, said the driver, pulling up to the hotel. I just wanted to see if she was all right. I had to see her. After she emailed me the name of the hotel she was staying in, I had my people put her up in the presidential suite. We made our way into the hotel and up to the elevator. Having stayed there many times before, I knew exactly where to go once I got there. The moment Gaspard and I stepped out of the elevator, we heard shouting. Get out of here, Nathan. She doesn't want to see you, someone yelled down the hallway. We followed the voice until we saw them. It was Nathan banging on the door of the presidential suite where Isabella was staying. My rage skyrocketed. At that point, I didn't know how I was going to keep myself from beating the shit out of him. He was right there asking for it. Let me in, Maya. I want to see my wife, he shouted, kicking at the door. This was the perfect opportunity. The sack of shit is finished. Hey, you remember me, you piece of shit? I hollered before Gaspard grabbed me and placed his hand around my mouth, keeping me from saying another word. He pulled me into a corner out of the view while security rushed to the door. They dragged Nathan to the elevator and pushed him in restraints. He never saw me, and I had lost my chance. Let go of me, I had him, I shouted. Understand, Dante, the last thing you want to be involved in is a brawl. How do you think Isabella will react if you beat the crap out of her husband? I understand you're emotionally disconcerted right now, but try to think about this logically, he said. I sighed. This was infuriating. Try to calm down. He's gone now. Why don't you go see how she's doing? She's the reason you came here, not him, he said, pointing me towards the door. I took a deep, frustrated breath and made my way over. I gave the door a knock and waited for it to open. I thought I told you to go away, Nathan, shouted Maya. It's Dante, I said calmly. I could see her little eye looking through the people. I'm sorry, Dante. Give us a minute, she said. It's Dante, I heard her whisper through the door. After that, I heard a loud thump. I stood outside for a good 15 minutes before they opened the door for me. She was there, sitting on a couch across from the doorway in a pink silk robe. Her long black hair soaked as if she'd just gotten out of the shower. How was I to contain myself in the face of such beauty? I couldn't say a word, nor could I move. Her beauty had frozen me. As I stood speechless in the doorway, she looked at me with a smile of relief. How I'd missed her so. I could not do without her. I never wanted to leave her side again. Psst, you might want to wipe that drool off your bottom lip. Maya whispered in my ear jokingly. What did you say? Isabella asked. Nothing, she said with a sly grin. Thanks for coming, Dante. You don't know how much I appreciate all this. The presidential suite here is amazing. She seemed cheerful, but I knew that was simply a facade. Underneath her joyous tone was sadness. I could see it in her eyes. It was the least I could do, I responded. She crossed her legs and the robe fell slightly, revealing her upper thigh. My heart started racing. Could you give us a minute? She asked. Of course. Maya closed the door, leaving Gaspard outside by himself. She then made her way to the guest room and sat on one of the leather couches. I meant for you to leave, as in leave the suite. Isabella gave her a stern look. Fine, Maya frowned. Joining Gaspard outside, she closed the door behind her. For the first time, I didn't want Maya to leave. 
While I had good control over my impulses, there was no telling what I might do if left alone with this beautiful angel. Isabella walked past me and smiled before she went to the door to lock it. I got a whiff of her euphoric, hypnotizing scent, calling me to hold her tight in my arms again. I'm so glad you decided to come, Dante. To my surprise, she wrapped her arms around me and hugged me tightly. I shivered in passionate serenity as I returned the favor, pulling her close, breathing her essence into my lungs. I didn't want to let her go, and she didn't pull away from my embrace. In fact, she welcomed it and hugged me even tighter. I don't ever want to let you go. I let slip off my tongue, hoping she didn't hear me. I don't want to let you go either, she whispered. My heart dropped down near my ankles. I couldn't believe this was happening. After all this time, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Isabella. I, I didn't mean to say that, I stuttered. She unclenched her arms from around my waist and looked me in the eyes. Yes, you did, she smiled. Is everything all right now? I tried to change the subject. I noticed her cut lip and black eye. She turned around and put her back to me. Dante, is it okay if I show you something? Her voice was fretful. You can show me anything you wish. She turned back around to face me, revealing her upper chest just above the breast. Bruises and scratches were spread all over her, as if a wild animal had bitten and clawed her blue and purple. Did he do this? I asked through clenched teeth. Yes, but he was just a little excited. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. The wrong idea? I shouted. She withdrew and covered herself up, walking over to the bed to sit. Isabella, you can't go on like this. How long will it be before he does something irreversible? When I described the meaning of making love to you in soul, I cried tears of envy. How many times does he have to break your heart before you realize you deserve so much more? She put her face in the palm of her hands and started to cry. Hoping I hadn't been too forceful in my tone, I walked over to the bed and sat beside her. She put her arms around my neck, crawled into my lap, curled into a ball, and sobbed with her face in my chest. Despite all the things he's done and how he's treated me, I still love him, she said in a raspy voice. The words, I still love him, threw me into a whirlwind of dismay, coupled with disbelief and anger. How could she still love this man? It just didn't make sense to me. I know this may sound silly, but he's the only man I've ever been with. He's the only man I've ever made love to. He's the only man I've ever known, she confided in me. It all made sense now. How could she know there were better options out there if she had never known anything but this? Isabella, I know it hurts, and I know what you're going through is emotionally painful, but please believe me when I tell you that abusive relationships are never the answer, no matter how much you love him. But he's not abusive. It was just this one time, and one time is enough. From what we talked about in Seoul and the fact that you are in this hotel room, I can tell he is extremely abusive to you mentally and now physically. You are a strong woman. I hope you see how much I care for you, and I don't want to see you hurt. And how much do you care about me? More than you know. Why do you care about me? I struggled to find tactful words to describe how much I cared about her without telling her I was in love with her. She looked up at me with tears in her eyes. I wiped away the little droplets of sorrow on her face and pulled her hair away from her lips and eyes. She was beautiful. Everything I desired. We haven't known each other long. Why do you care about me so much, Dante? She repeated. Because everything you are is the epitome of everything a man could want. She pushed herself closer to my body and wrapped her legs around my waist. Taking my head in both her hands, she forced me to look her in the eyes. That's when I noticed she was wearing nothing underneath her robe. This was maddening. The warmth of her semi-nude body gave me chills and caused my self-control to fall by the wayside. I could take her right now if I wanted to. Lord knew I had dreamed of nothing else. Dante, please just tell me, are you in love with me? I fell silent. I couldn't tell her I was in love with her, not yet. But she had me. How did I get out of this situation? She was sitting on top of me with my face in her hands in a somewhat tight grip. Tears were still forming in her eyes, and I could see the desperation of wanting to be loved on her face. What was I going to do? She was still a married woman, and if I told her my feelings, it would mean she'd left her husband for me, and not because it was what she needed to do. I was caught in a conundrum with no way out. Dante, please, tell me, she demanded, shaking my head back and forth. You are in an emotionally fragile state right now, and I don't want to complicate things, 
I said, hoping she would release her grip on my face. Are you in love with me, Dante? Just tell me, please. Isabella, I... 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 I just want to know because I think I'm... I think I'm... You think you're pregnant? I exclaimed with wide eyes. My God, no. I've been on a depo injection for the last six months. And we've been using protection since we've been married. I don't want to have children with Nathan until he adjusts his attitude and seeing... As he almost raped me and gave me all these bruises, it seems I made the right choice. You use protection with your husband? I asked curiously. Yes, it was his idea. He said he's not ready for children just yet. I sighed in relief. So Dante, just please tell me. Are you in love with me? She asked again. With the utmost intensity, I wanted to blurt it out and tell her everything. Oh my God, Dante, I feel so stupid right now. If you don't care for me, then why did you come here? I never said I didn't care for you, Isabella. Then you do? Just tell me. I think I should go now. You're not leaving, Dante. Not this time. She tightened her grip. Isabella, please. Would you just talk to me? Why don't you just tell me the truth? Because I can't, I said firmly. Dante, you're married to him, and you still love him. Where does that leave me? If I tell you what I want to say, where would that leave me? Where would it leave you? She got quiet and let go of my head, leaving two sweaty palm prints on my cheeks. In my entire teenage and adult life, I had never shed a tear, never cried, even when I saw my father buried at his funeral. The same man who taught me to always respect the virtue of marriage also taught me that men do not cry. Nevertheless, as I sat here and looked at this woman in the eyes, I couldn't help but unleash a single tear. It rolled down my face, and she wiped it away and embraced me once more putting her head on my shoulder. I can't let him go, but I can't let you go either, she said, putting a dagger through my heart as she professed her love for that maniac again. Soon, Isabella, you will know everything about me. When you're ready to let him go, I'll be there, I said, combing my fingers through her hair. I never thought things would go this far. What I didn't understand was how she could still be in love with him. What power did he have over her? It was maddening to think about. Chapter 26 Nathan I went to her hotel, but her bitch cousin Maya was there. She wouldn't let me see her, I shouted in frustration. If you screw this up for us, I will end you. This isn't a game, Nathan. Both of our asses are on the line here. You couldn't control yourself for a few more months? Oliver scolded. I just got a little carried away. I know my wife. I have her wrapped around my finger. She'll be back in my arms wanting my love and affection in no time. Oliver looked at me dismissively. He wasn't buying it, but I knew my wife. It was only a matter of time before she came crawling back to me. If you put our plans in jeopardy, I swear to fucking God, everything will go as planned. Don't worry your weak, feeble little mind. All had better go as planned, Nathan. Embezzling your wife's wealth and the profits from the company will only work if you two stay together. I am all too aware, and don't forget who the hell you're talking to, I hissed. He shied away, because he knew I could release the monster any time I chose. Oliver knew what was at stake, which was why he had no choice but to get involved when I told him what happened. She always stayed at the same hotel, close by the office, when she was too tired to make it home, so I figured she would have gone there. With Valentina growing restless, I had to find a way to convince my wife to give up ownership of her company. Oliver had started to receive pushback from Gaspard on the financial information that led to the dismantled partnership with the Xinghai Ma Corporation. If Gaspard discovered the truth, it would mean not only the ruination of Oliver's career, but also a potential prosecution for the both of us. While in South Korea, Isabella had instructed him to forward this information to the team of that billionaire partner of hers when they got back. However, Oliver still had yet to do so. He could have come up with something for their meeting tomorrow if asked about the information. I hadn't spoken to Isabella the entire time she was in South Korea, and I'd lost valuable time in trying to convince her to sell. The lost time would have to be rectified, depending on Isabella's willingness to come back home. In the meantime, I had to find a way to keep Valentina's impatience at bay before she did something that would destroy all our plans. Chapter 27, Isabella. It had been over a week since I had seen Nathan, Dante, or Maya. 
I knew I couldn't stay at this hotel forever, but my mind had been going in circles, and I didn't know what to do. I had to postpone the meeting with Oliver, and asked Maya to brief him on our standing in the Asian market a few days ago. Oliver may not have agreed with my decision, but I went ahead and appointed Maya the interim COO of the company. We're family, and she understood the company just as well as I did. In all honesty, she'd been with me since its inception. She had the experience and knowledge, and I trusted her to run the company in my absence. I just hoped things would be alright as I got myself together. Hello ma'am, room service, a man said, knocking at the door. I was a little surprised and mystified. It was strange because I didn't order any room service. Just leave it outside, I said. I'm sorry ma'am, but you have to sign for this. With my hair a mess and my face flushed red, I went to the door to let him in. He served me a piece of chocolate cake with a letter. The same type of letter I would see on my waterfront. It was the same configuration from my secret admirer. It couldn't be. I ripped open the seal and, sure enough, it was what I believed it to be. Sir, excuse me, but who gave you this letter? I asked. Letter, ma'am? Yes, this letter here. Who gave it to you? I'm sorry, but I didn't even notice the letter until you pointed it out. I'm not sure how it got there, he said sincerely. I was so confused. How could you not know it was there? Did the person who gave you this letter pay you to keep his identity a secret? I promise you, ma'am, I didn't notice it until you said something. Here, I'll dispose of it. No, no, don't. All right, I believe you. Very well. He started to make his way back to the door. Hey, wait. You said I had to sign for this. Where do I sign? He smiled. You don't have to sign for anything. Good day, ma'am. He swiftly made his departure. That's when I knew. Wait! Come back! Who gave you this letter? I yelled down the hallway, but it was too late. He was already in the elevator. Sneaky bastard. Did everyone in the entire city know I was staying at this hotel? I opened the letter and there was my name at the top, written just as before. It was a poem. No other dialogue addressed specifically to me, just words in the form of poetry. Was I so desirable that someone continued to send me letters month after month? That one of the wealthiest men in the world wanted me? I was just an ordinary businesswoman, trying to make a name for herself. I unfolded the rest of the paper and read the words written. Dear Isabella, forbid this gift of passion as it is drowning in secrets dancing its dance and singing its songs. I hope you finally realize that it is I who have loved you for so long. The salted sea air blew through your hair during the sunset, gratifying my feelings yet tormenting my soul. He walked beside me, armor in right hand, heart in left as the story goes. Oh yes, how I love your smile, your gaze, your scent that compels me to stay. But when you profess your love for another man, all that I am is slaughtered. And to rest I lay, it hurts. Am I forever to be blinded and shunned by love's daunting curse? As long as I have watched you from afar, never have I dreamed that someday I would embrace you. Oh yes, that sensual embrace. To watch tears of joy flow from your eyes, I thought the emotion alone would cause me to suffocate. I've forbidden the gift of passion, as it is drowning in secrets, dancing its dance and singing its songs. What of logic, the unknown facade of reason that forces me to stay hidden for so long? That night, you remember it well. Tell me you remember it well. It was reminiscent of the things they may speak in sweet, sweet fairy tales. We took each other in, letting go of our inhibitions. Those comforting moments helped us to toss aside the world when you gave me permission. I never wanted to let you go. Never wanted to leave you alone. Letting you go would have turned my heart, my very soul to stone. I love you well beyond death, forever and ever, dancing my dance and singing my songs. Tell me, Isabella, look inside of yourself and tell me how can this be wrong. I love you. I love you truly. I love you only. And I will love you always, dancing my dance and singing my songs. This was too much for me to bear. Too much sensation, too much emotional disarray. This had to be Dante. It just had to be. I should have asked him flat out when he was here. This poem was so sensual. Only someone who was truly in love could have written it. There was no doubt in my mind Dante wrote this. I had started receiving these letters just months before Dante entered my life. He was the only man who knew such things, and he was the only one who would have written something so passionate. We took each other in, letting go of our inhibitions. That had to refer to the night we spent together in Seoul. I didn't want to leave my husband, but... This man had showed me things I never knew possible. I felt something for him, and even though it had only been a little over a week, 
I felt as if I were going insane since we had been apart. I never felt this way with my husband. And, to tell you the truth, I enjoyed being away from him. I had to... My phone rang. Who was calling me? Hello? Isabella, it's been a damn week now. Are you coming home or not? Nathan said in his raspy voice. Every time I spoke to him, every time I heard his voice, it pissed me off. After everything he did to me, he was still unapologetic and screamed demands at me, as if I should just conform to his every whim. I hung up without saying a word. I still needed time to think. I had all of these problems bouncing around in my life, and the man who was supposed to be helping me and comforting me through it all was doing nothing but adding to the problem. In fact, he was the problem. My phone rang again and I answered it, ready to unleash my fury. Stop calling me, Nathan! I told you I need some space! I screamed into the phone. Isabella, it's me, Maya. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you were Nathan. He's been calling me nonstop all day. I felt relieved hearing her voice. It's okay. I'm glad you're finally taking a stand against that asshole. Anyway, you need to come down to the office right away. I found some irregularities regarding our business deal with the Xinghai Ma Corporation. They were well hidden, but I found them. I asked Gaspard and Dante to have their team look into the matter so we can have an independent eye exam everything. What's happened, I asked. This was the last thing I needed. You should come down here so we can discuss it in person. Is Dante going to be there? I haven't seen Dante since we met at the hotel last week. I thought he was with you this whole time. Okay, I'll be down there later today. I hung up the phone. Had Dante retreated from the world just as I had, I probably should have asked her if Gaspard had seen him. No matter how much I begged and pleaded for him to stay with me, he chose to leave. I suppose the love I still felt for my husband was too much for him to bear. I reread the words in the letter. But when you profess your love for another man, all that I am is slaughtered, and to rest I lay. It hurts. If Dante wrote this, that sentence was proof enough he was hurting just as I was. How I wished that moment in soul on the rooftop could have lasted forever. It was so peaceful. It had put my mind at ease. I'd felt utterly free with him. Chapter 28 Dante I sat alone in my villa as I watched multiple women come and go from their house. Even after he abused her and left her alone in the hotel room to sulk in her misery, he still slept around as if nothing had changed. He didn't deserve to breathe as far as I was concerned. How could she love him? How could she even remotely feel the slightest speck of affection for this dissolute sack of shit? Desperate times called for drastic measures, and the time had come for her to see the truth. This had gone on for far too long, and I was sick of it. I couldn't take another day of this. Being away from her for so long was driving me mad. My every waking moment, all the hours, all the minutes, and all the seconds of each day was consumed by thoughts of her. With that said, my love for her could not overshadow her suffering. To see her suffer killed a piece of me. It chipped away at my heart until nothing was left. I loved her, beyond anything I could ever fathom. To see her like this was intolerable. I would thought I would be able to sit back in the shadows and wait for her to discover the truth for herself, but no, the time had come. When she'd looked me in the eyes and asked me if I loved her, I'd seen something there. Something any grown man would long for his entire life. I knew she'd fallen in love with me, and all my heart's desires had descended into a cocoon of bliss at that moment. How I adored her. I loved her so much, well beyond the physical. No longer would I sit on the sidelines and wait for her to discover the kind of man she married. No longer would I wait for him to abuse her again. No longer would my heart be a prisoner to the whims of our next business meeting or her crying and suffering. It was time to tell her what I had seen, what I had heard. Perhaps I should confide in Maya so she could help me with what I had to do. That's when the doorbell rang, pulling me from my thoughts. It was two o'clock in the morning. Who would be at my door this late? I made my way downstairs, hoping Isabella was on the other side of the door. I knew that couldn't be true, however. I glanced at the security camera and found a petite woman wrapped in a robe. Probably one of his playthings he'd decided to abandon looking for help. I went to the door and opened it slightly. Can I help you? I couldn't help but notice this woman looked like a mixture of Isabella and Maya with subtle differences in her nose and lip features. Hi, my name is Valentina. Do you mind if I use your phone to call a taxi or an Uber? I looked her up and down. You mean to tell me you don't have a cell phone? This woman gave me a suspicious vibe. The battery died, she claimed. I scanned the area to make sure this wasn't a trick. Just one moment, I said before closing the door. I went to look at my security cameras to ensure that no one else was out there. 
Debating whether I should let her in, I peered through the peephole in the security camera once more. She seemed harmless. I opened the door and sighed. Sure. Come in, but only to use the phone. Her appearance was so much like Maya's, I couldn't help but think my eyes were playing tricks on me. Where are you coming from? She didn't answer. She only stared me in the face for a moment. The same look Isabella had given me when we first met. Are you here alone? She asked. I took a seat on the couch. I thought you just needed to use the phone. Here. I tossed her my cell. Without another word, she took off her robe, revealing her red and black silk lingerie. I jumped up out of my seat and took a few steps back. I need you to help me, she said. I backed away. Please, leave right now before I have my security team escort you out, I demanded. She stood there laughing. This was the last thing I needed right now. Some strange woman showing up at my door wearing lingerie? This had to be a dream. Are you going to help me? She asked, putting her hand on my shoulder, moving her body closer to mine. I stepped back and made my way to the front door. What is it that you want? My phone is right there. I want you inside me, she said, smiling. Leave. Now, I said forcefully. Was she insane? She walked over to the door and pushed it close. I just want you to help me, that's all. You're one of my neighbor's girls, aren't you? What happened? Did he kick you out and now you're looking for somewhere else to stay? What do you know about your neighbor? I know he's a fiend that I want nothing to do with. I also know his wife. If you're not going to call an Uber, then perhaps I should call her to come pick you up, I said firmly. She backed away, mouth gaping. Putting her robe back on, she rushed to the door, but I blocked her way. You're hiding something, aren't you? Tell me the real reason you came here. You asked me to leave, so I'll leave, she said. I continued to block the door with my arms. Something was suspicious about this, and I was going to find out what. After she backed away from the door, I sat on the chair next to the couch. She sat on the couch across from me. The only way you're opening that door is through a code. And until you tell me the real reason you came to my door, you're stuck in here, I said politely with an undertone of suspicion. If I had known you knew Isabella, I would never have come here. I could tell she was nervous. I'm going to ask you one last time. Why did you come here? She looked at me, then down at her feet, seemingly refusing to speak. Fine, I guess I'll just give Isabella a call. Maybe she might know why you're at her house at 2am with her husband. No, please don't, she said. I'll tell you everything. She tightened her robe and adjusted her sitting position. I sat there, waiting for answers. I'm Isabella's cousin, she said. I was stunned. Nathan was fucking his wife's cousin? The bastard had no shame. I thought she'd looked like Maya, but this was ridiculous. Do you know a woman named Maya? I asked. Yes, she's my sister. Again, I sat there, shocked. Words couldn't explain the shitstorm that would occur if Isabella knew about this. I knew Nathan had no morals, but to cheat with his cousin-in-law was beyond reprehensible. I put my face in the palm of my hand and shook my head in disbelief. Maybe moving into this villa was a mistake. Now I was caught up in Nathan's mess, all because this woman decided to come to my door unannounced. Why the hell did you come here? I'm not much for passing judgment, but the fuck your cousin's husband is just... Never mind. Just tell me what you want. Promise me you won't tell Isabella any of this, she pleaded. I sighed. Tell me, and I'll have one of my security team drive you home safely. All right, all right. Relief flushed her face. Nathan, your neighbor, kicked me out and told me to walk home. He wouldn't give me my car keys, and I don't want to involve the police for obvious reasons. So why try and seduce me? Why not make your call and leave? That was my plan until, of course, you answer the door. You're Dante Alonso. Aren't you? I read Forbes in the Wall Street Journal. I know who you are. You're the most desired bachelor there is. I thought I'd take a shot. Besides, why are you living here anyways? You could have an entire beachfront of villas if you wanted them. I rolled my eyes. You can leave now. Tell your little boyfriend to give you the keys to your car back. Threaten him if you wish. Just get out of my house. I moved aside, creating a pathway for her exit. Wait a second. I can't go back there. He's insane. She bellowed. You're both insane. Please leave. I said remorselessly. I can't go back into the house. He kicked me out because I wouldn't consent to his pain room treatment. My brows curled. Pain room treatment? He has a pain room? Yes, she lowered her gaze. Do I even want to know what that is? I was afraid to ask, but I was also worried he may have subjected Isabella to whatever lied within this room of his. Crossing her arms and embracing her gut, she went on to describe some of the most sickening acts of sexual gratification I had ever heard. When she started to explain to me what he had done to her in that pain room chamber he created, I almost vomited. I felt nauseated and ashamed of having to listen to it. Stop, please, just stop, I said. 
She got on her knees. Can you come over there with me and help me get my keys from him? I stared at her as if she were nuts. There's no way in hell I'm going over there. I'm not getting involved in this nonsense. She stood up. Please? Absolutely not. She dropped her head. I still had no sympathy for her. This was all her doing anyways. Do you know if he ever did that to Isabella? The question that would determine whether or not I would beat Nathan to near death. She curled her lip and smiled. Hell no, he hasn't. Why do you think he fucks me? Isabella would never be able to satisfy his sexual urges. I'm pretty sure she'd divorce him if she knew what kind of man he truly is. Relief purged my torment. Picturing Isabella with him as she'd just described would have broken my heart. I ran my fingers through my hair and squinted at her in disgust. I don't understand how you could sleep with your cousin's husband knowing what type of man he is. I shook my head. Once again, she didn't reply. She only gave that expressionless stare as if I were in the wrong for even asking such questions. I picked up my phone. I'm calling Isabella. She has to know about this. Her mouth dropped open. Of course, Isabella didn't know I was living in the villa next door, and giving her this knowledge was the last thing I wanted to do. Despite the emptiness of that threat, Valentina stood up and stopped me. Wait, please don't. Promise me you won't call her, and I'll tell you everything, she begged. Everything about what? About their scheme. Scheme? What scheme? I laid my phone down and gave her my full attention. She had my interest now. Look, I'm not fucking him just for the pleasure's sake. Things are in motion you can't begin to understand. Regardless, after what Nathan tried to pull on me, I'm convinced he's not going to let me in on anything. He'll probably just disappear once they have the money. The money? I raised an eyebrow. Tell me everything. They're going to siphon all of Isabella's and Ariel and Com Cosmetics' assets. They've been planning this for years. I wanted in, so I lied to Nathan about being pregnant. But after he strapped me to the floor of his pain room and put a dagger to my stomach, I knew he was crazy, she confessed. I tried to maintain my composure as best I could. Who are they? I hissed. Nathan and Oliver. Like whiplash, it hit me without warning. I couldn't believe it. If she hadn't come to my door tonight... I slammed my hand on a nearby table, which caused her to flinch. That fucking piece of shit, I murmured. What the hell made them think that they would be able to get away with this? They knew my team of forensic accountants would eventually find out. Now, here this woman Valentina was, giving me all the information I needed to bring this destructive marriage to its end. One thing I'd learned about Isabella was that her company was one of the most important aspects of her life. She would give her all to make sure the business maintained its success. This woman coming to my doorstep was a blessing just as much as it was a curse. Do you have any idea what this means? She scoffed. Yes, I know exactly what this means, but I have no other choice. The second I entered your home, I was screwed. You were going to tell her I was here, and from there, the dominoes would have fallen, leading to her finding out everything anyways. I think it's better she hears it from you than me. You don't know her. She's insane. I shot her a confused gaze. How is she insane? Isabella is emotionally unstable. She beats her husband and treats my sister like a slave. There's no telling what she'll do when she finds out about this. When she does, I want to be as far away as possible. I almost busted out laughing. She couldn't be serious. Who told you such nonsense? Nathan. He has the scars to prove it. He told me Isabella put a couple of billiard balls into a sock and hit herself in the face and chest. Now she wants to paint him as an abusive husband so she can divorce him, leaving him with nothing, she confessed. I sat there mesmerized. Her gullibility knew no bounds. And you believe that bullshit? After what he tried to do to you? Even after he told you he was going to steal all her wealth, you still believed him? She's your cousin. You don't know your own damn cousin? I started to become frustrated by her obliviousness. She said no words. Perhaps having said these ridiculous claims aloud made her come to her senses. I sighed and ran my fingers through my hair once again. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to call Isabella and tell her everything you just told me about Nathan's plan to suck her dry. Say you got an anonymous tip or whatever. She stood up, shocked. I can't. She'll kill me if she finds out. Don't tell her about your involvement. Just focus on Nathan and Oliver. You can gather whatever dignity you have left by leaving town before she finds out you were in on it. She shook her head as I held up my phone. The number to her hotel room is in this phone. The call will be anonymous and the number can't be traced. Don't tell her where you are. Backing away, she continued to shake her head. Take the damn thing and call her, I demanded. 
She slowly reached for the phone and I put it into her hand. I pressed the call button for her. It rang once and she hung up swiftly. Tears were rolling down her face. The phone landed on the floor as she dropped to her knees. Please don't make me do this. My family will disown me, she begged. I was puzzled as to why she would ask me not to do this when I had done nothing. This was all her doing. Hers, Nathan's, and Oliver's. They devised this plan to take what Isabella worked so hard to earn. The begging did nothing but build on my anger and wear on my patience. Even a last-ditch effort to win my sympathy, she confessed that all she'd ever wanted was a way out of a life of mediocrity, which was why she'd lied to Nathan about being pregnant. She saw him as a way out, a way to get enough money to get far away from here. Isabella never trusted her enough to give her a job in her company, and she saw her as nothing but a gold digger, willing to use her looks and not her brains to get ahead. With that rejection, she decided to start sleeping with Isabella's husband, something she'd not viewed as a colossal mistake. The more she talked, the more sickened I became. It seemed she and Nathan were made for each other. I picked up my phone again and handed it to her. You either call your cousin and tell her what they're planning, or I'll call her and expose you in the process. It's your choice, I threatened. She wavered, but took the phone from me. Dialing the number, it rang three times before Isabella answered. She put it on speaker so I could hear what Isabella said. Valentina, why are you calling so late at night? And how did you get this number? Valentina bit her lip and then sighed into the phone. There's something I need to tell you. I sat on the couch and stared daggers at her as she confessed Nathan's plan. Isabella began to shout over the phone. I could hear her anger, disgust, and betrayal in her voice. Despite Valentina's efforts to calm her, Isabella continued to scream in revulsion. It tore me up inside to hear Isabella go through this, but the truth had been hidden long enough. Isabella threatened to kill both Nathan and Oliver before hanging up the phone. To my surprise, Valentina had also described Nathan's sexual deviance in rich detail. While I told her only to divulge the information about Nathan's scheme, she went ahead and outed herself. I couldn't believe it. Valentina handed me the phone and walked over to my front door. Why? Why'd you tell her about your affair with Nathan? I stood there perplexed. Because I couldn't live a lie anymore. I didn't want what happened to me to happen to her. It's obvious Nathan only cares for himself. If I can't get what I need, then neither should he. She opened up the door and was about to walk out. I was stunned by her crisis of conscience. An Uber was waiting outside for her. That's for you. I called them before I even opened my door. She gave me a slight smile before climbing into the car. With her gone, I was now more worried about Isabella. I could only guess she was on her way home to see Nathan, and it was anyone's guess what she would do once she got there. Nathan had a collection of people over there already. If Isabella saw him for who he truly was in rich hedonistic detail, she might do something she'd regret. Worried about what Isabella may do, I called Maya in the hopes that she'd answer, so she could meet Isabella there to calm her down. I knew once she was calmed, I would have to tell her everything. The time for secrets was over.